So as I was preparing for, for filming today's episode, a thought came to mind about the power of music. Music is a means whereby many can sow seeds of hope in fields of faith and reap rewards of revelation and motivation to move on and to continue because life is filled with, with wonderful things and difficult things. Music really provides this softening, um, powerful influence in our life to continue to move forward on the covenant path. And if you read the Psalms, all of them, even if you just randomly open up your scriptures to the Psalms and put your finger down and start reading, chances are you're going to find elements that every one of us face in our journey along the covenant path. So you're going to see praise, you're going to see pleading for mercy and forgiveness, you're going to see gratitude, you're going to see love, you're going to see exulting expressions throughout these psalms. All of these experiences that you and I face as we press forward with a steadfast faith in Christ on that covenant path. So it's th this is a really uh, beautiful section of the scriptures that often gets overlooked. And I get inspired by these people who lived so long ago, but they were so devoted to God, and their praise echoes across the ages. And here we are, thousands of years later, hearing their words and finding consolation and love and God's presence in what they recorded so, so very long ago. And also just to think that many of these were temple hymns sung in the temple of the ancient Israelites as they would worship and sacrifice. It just helps me to feel like I'm brought into that sacred congregation of devotion to God. Wonderful. So let's jump in for our first chapter today. It's in section – or chap, Psalm, rather, 102. This is a, this is a psalm that, that starts us off with a feeling of being afflicted, overwhelmed, maybe filled with a sense of anxiety and, and these deep frustrations. And once again, poetry and music, they have a way of, of reaching deeper into our soul and, soul and pulling out some of those deeper human emotions, whether they be, be on the good side or on the difficult side. In this case, you can feel the psalmist and, and the wrestle and the struggle coming off of this page. So we have this, this little subtitle that shows up in the original documents. Now, the italics were provided by, uh, by church leaders, but this little tiny uh, short paragraph where it says, a prayer of the afflicted, that shows up in the original uh, Hebrew documents. So, it's like a guidance to help us understand what's the context that evoked this particular psalm. And listen to this, it says, hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Now, it's interesting the word here in the original Hebrew, it's not simply to listen or to comprehend somebody's words. The word here has a very clear sense of action. So this petitioner is seeking for God to do something, not simply to acknowledge like, yep, I recognize all the words you said to me, but to have God act on their behalf. Very powerful. Sometimes God turns it around and he wants us to hear. He wants us to hear him. This is now a petitioner saying, I need you, Lord. I need you to act for me. 